What a view out of our shop. Really, really enjoying this amazing forest we live in. Hello friends and welcome to another episode of the Urban Homesteading channel. If today is the first time you are visiting with us, we want to extend to you a very warm welcome and invite you to watch any or all of our over 500 videos, arrange for your convenience in playlists, as we are confident you are going to find something both entertaining and useful to watch. If you have been here before but you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? It is free and it greatly helps our channel. Do subscribe. If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very happy birthday. So here we are in our shop that slowly but steadily is coming into shape or getting better organized but we have some way to go and part of the process is I want a lot of things that they are um, what do you call it movable or not movable yeah. mobile so that we can uh, free the space when we need it to have as, as a, an extra space and be able to make the, the shop more uh, functional for whatever we want and whatever we build. To this end, we were at our local restore today and I found a very nice, uh, I guess it, in, it was a drawer at some point, but it is metal and it is nice, it has a very good size to it. And we are going to use it to create a mobile cart that will allow us the flexibility we want in the shop. So, of course, Something similar can be found in your area, it, doesn't, it won't be identical. So there is no point to give you dimensions for this project because we are going to adapt what we're doing for that specific item. We don't have the dimensions right now in our mind either. We just came with that, uh, just arrived back from the restore. So stick around and we're going to show you out how we took a, a $4 find from the restore and make a functional uh, movable or mobile tray for our shop. So like always, I'm going to try and use lumber that I already have. My concept is not to be uh, the prettiest thing we're going to build today, but the most functional thing. And I want to keep the cost down. Again, this is a shop, we're not building furniture. But the idea of what we're going to show you can be applied to create a tray in your house. Simply use uh, better quality lumber versus dimensional uh, lumber you get at the big box store. But again, I have lumber here and I'm going to try and use it for this project. And here is our find from the restore. I don't know what the original function of this drawer was, but it is very well constructed. It is, it has a nice lip around it. It is all metal and it, I may or may not paint it after I construct it. I know I'm not going to paint it today, but it has handles both sides that they're substantial. So it can support some weight when, when we move it. So now we're going to get around into making the design of the project. And I think one of the best parts about it is that it has a lip yeah. so that it can be inserted into a frame. Right. All right, folks, so stick around and we're going to show you how we so do So we have a bunch of uh, deck spindles that have uh, been left here in the property. And I'm going to use them to make part of the frame. And the idea now is we're going to make a frame for the uh, drawer, so we call it the drawer or tab, anyway, whatever we call it, to sit on and provide a lot of support. And then we are going to add for strength on the lip, right and left, but not front and back, so we can easily remove it from uh, its crate, whatever we are we calling it a crate. Cart stand, crate. cart stand. So we are going to start by cutting these pieces and, and creating the bottom. And we are going to show you this process and then we're going to go on with the rest of it, the build. So here we are at our, on our uh, chop saw and we are making the, the cuts we need to assemble the bottom support. Yeah. 
it becomes a problem because it drops it when it turns. So, so here we are with the, our dry feet and the the bottom part that will support the self the bucket whatever we want to call it is here and you might ask why in the world they did miters first of all this is not visible and second of all this is not furniture right and the reason i did miters is because i'm cheap and i don't want to buy new equipment uh, material and this material was already mitered in one end so it will give us economy of material to miter everything right plus it's good to practice anytime you practice a skill it becomes even better and better so even though it is not important in this project we would have gone straight across and we actually got some pretty good miters out of this yep. which surprised me but in any case now we're going to to connect it and we're going to show you how we do that at least in one corner but and you no know, it's not about being cheap it's about being cost effective as well as using the material you have so that we're also environmentally conscious Cheap. And <laughs> and because upcycling and using things that are both available and um, they it adds something to your finished product when you're using something different. Yes. Anyway, so there are several ways you can attach these. You can use uh, brad nails. We are going to glue these joints because we don't want them kind of apart. And we are going to, I don't know what we're going to use. We might use pocket holes, or we might use brad nails, or we might use screws, or we might use uh, framing nails. We haven't decided yet. But once we decided, we're going to show you what we decided and how we did it. So, so stick here around. we are, we are ready to, to start the assembly. We decided that we're going to put glue to reinforce our, our joints. And then we're going to use screws. And uh, to miss Wizard's point, because we are, uh, how did you put it? You didn't like cheap. So what is the correct term? Resourceful. Because we are resourceful, we are going to use screws that we have taken out of other projects. Is that resourceful enough? Yes, it's very resourceful. Reduce, reuse, recycle. As you right? can see, they are nice and used, you know, so. Yeah. And we're using our corner clamps. Handy dandy corner clamps. That will be the likes. Well, they make nice, tight corners. And Right now, I just had this slid over so I could do fitment on of course the, sides, that, the, the width of the board. The other two corners will be a little more challenging because we won't have the, the luxury of... Well, because I'm going to take that one. Right, but you have to put glow at the same... I know. At the same? I know. I don't know what the same is, but at the same. And these are very inexpensive Harbor Freight um, corner corner clamps, but they work clamps. very, very well. All right, we're going to pre-drill. No, 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 no. no. no Sorry, my apologies. We are going to make pilot holes. Right. There is no such thing as pre-drilling. And we're going to do it on both sides. And now we're going to touch. Woo! That got hot. They do get hot. For only two little screws. Hot glue is hot, dude. That's not hot glue, though. I know. Ever since you burned yourself, you, you're making this joke. It's a safety uh, message. Yes. Stuff is hot. And again, the, the screws here just act as clamps for our project, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So we're going to do the other two and we're going to be... So right from back. our pile of wood that we use for other projects, we found a two by four and we are squaring both sides of it because it is not square. Mm -hmm. So you always start by squaring your wood. So now we have nice square edges and we decided uh, based on the, the length of this board, which is what we said, 68, 68 uh -huh. that the height will be 34 plus a couple of inches because we're going to add uh, some uh, casters on it, right? So how we decided that height, we looked at our table saw, which is a good height for us. And we looked at the, the other um, tray we have here and that is simply a good 
height, right? I mean, yeah, it's in between. It, it really depends on you and your needs, but I would say no lower than 32, 32 to 36 or 38 is a good height, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to, to mark and cut this in half and we're going to be right back with you. So here we are, we have a, a nice square cut, which is what we're looking for, right? Yeah. This is not critical, but it is a little important because these are legs, right? So they have to, to sit on the floor correctly and I need to stop dropping things. So the next step is to make sure that the two cut pieces are the same dimension. And it looks to me like they are, what do you think? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we need two more pieces of that and we will continue the build. Okay, and we found another two by four and now we are using one of our cut pieces to make sure that we have the same, same dimension. So what you do is you, you just touch it there to make sure that it's flush and you move the two in unison, bring your blade down and you just touch your blade and that will give you the same dimension. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. And we have put our frame framing square to make sure that this leg is square. Mm -hmm. And we are going to attach it now using our uh, nailing gun. Do you want to do it or you want me to do it? Uh, you're going to do it. Okay, you have to come around here then to hold this. Okay. Tell me when you have it. I have it. All right. Yes, the dance. One or two, you think? Two. <sighs> oh. Are they too long? They might go through, I don't know. Am I in the right you spot? Have to brace. Am brace I on the right spot? So that it doesn't Hold on, just push I, that way. Am I on the right spot? I think you're a little high. High. Is, does it come out right in the middle? Yes. Okay, lower. Lower. There. Okay, is it straight? This is the line. This is oh. What? There, right? Come down. Come down. And it's not level. Don't worry okay. about the level. This one's sticking out just a bit. I see it. What? You, you didn't want a B-roll of yours? No. So what are we doing are now? Are we on the mark? Well, that is not the right way though. It is. This way and that way. You're sure? I want you on this one. Slightly towards me. There. Ready? Yep. I didn't follow my own. So. Did you start? So we made the second uh, frame there which is identical to the first and it's going to go lower towards the bottom of the device to do two things. The first will be to provide structural integrity to it and the second to provide a space for us to put a shelf right. to store more things because it's all about storage. So yep. we're going to show you this. We didn't show you how we built this because it's identical to the first. Yeah, we just made a replica of the first one in right. the same dimensions. And all pieces are mitered at 45 yep. degrees. All right, so as we said, the second frame is going to be used for both to us add strength and stability to the cart but also to allow us to add a second shelving unit so we're using it to rough draw the dimensions we need on a piece of plywood that we had laying around and then we're going to do the necessary cuts and we're going to have ourselves nice picture frames right it sure does nice mitered corners it sure does yeah. yeah except for the one yeah this we didn't make this was a, a factory cut corner that's why it looks up, and if you look at our corners, a better look at the back of the corner. Yeah, yeah. And this one looks so much better. This is the one that we cut. Right, but right. again, this is we are not building furniture, right? No. So we're going to cut this, and I guess we can use our table saw to cut it. I guess we can. I guess we can. Well, if it was a furniture piece, I would use the truck saw. 
because it would give us perfect cuts. And this is going to be at the bottom of our cart. Right. Right? So that it's going to provide stability and also more storage. Yeah. And if we do it in the future, we can make another one of these. Not the carts, the selves. Oh, yeah. And we are going to... Alpida is going to make the cut. Because this is not flat, because it has been in the shop for some time, we are going to have the width of the blade or the height of the blade a little higher than normal to make sure we're going to go through the material, right? Yeah, a little cut. There. Yes. Now we need to cut this little piece and we'll be done with ourselves. Done with ourselves. And we want that right on the line or just inside it. This is our waist, so it can be either there or right on. There? Yeah. Okay. I think you need to come a little this way. No, yeah. Don't. Yes, otherwise it will be long. Remember, this is the most outside part of the okay. self. Okay, are you ready? Mm -hmm. No, no, don't ever do that. Tell me what happened. It just started kicking back. Right, but the moment it does that, you stop. You don't try to push it forward or pull it back. I'm just telling you. It startled her. She didn't know. Well, what that's happened. why I said no, no. Okay. Well, I'm just confused at this point. So here is I'm an unproof to lesson in uh, saucer safety. By the way, Elpida didn't do anything wrong. This piece is just challenging because it is capped, right? But as you can see here, this is the typical kick kickback scenario. This is our cut. Elpida was coming this way, and do you see what the blade did? And you might have heard on the video. I don't know if it was audible or not but I said no no to here so we would stop because uh, she tried to correct it and you just cannot the the power of the saw is substantially stronger than you so the only thing you need to do at the time is try to avoid get uh, hit yeah you don't want to get injured because that was going to directly go to her torso right but uh, this is the best example of kickback without the actual kickback right that I've seen does that make sense so what we did in the end was what what we did in there was correct it's just that i'm just saying oh. we were we were coming through this way yeah. and that's where it kicked back on the right. edge of the board because so you see it's higher right and and right. we were trying to stabilize it by pressing it actually we were yeah we in one way or another i don't anyway, know anyway so then we turned it and then just cut the little edge off so that we didn't you have were to go almost through. to the end yeah right so we had about that much to do and we just flipped the board and did that side yeah from this direction and this was a a light piece of wood it will not have killed here but it would have injured here right I mean it's still a substantial piece of wood you wouldn't have enjoyed it on your torso I'm sure <laughs> but again here's an example we didn't do anything wrong there was nothing wrong with the cut now but if we had the writhing knife if we had the writhing knife this wouldn't have happened right it would have kept the board and we don't put the writhing knife because in the past we used our sled a lot and you cannot use a sled with a driving knife but in general this is a good example because the driving knife will have kept the board away from the blade but you can see what the curve is in the board right yeah it's, it's substantial white but you see the driving knife would have kept the the board from turning at all so it would not have grabbed it to kick it back mm -hmm. so use your driving knife no all right problems. we are going to do a a dry fit and then we're going to get right back with you and here is our dry, dry fit and as you can see we have a good fit here we will attach it we'll probably lift it a, a few inches up uh, and we're going to, to get our uh, rollers that we still have them Casters. we don't have to buy them and maybe that will be the determining factor actually to see what we need to do but anyway we're going to show you but we are satisfied now that it actually fits all right so we'll here right we are we decided for aesthetics we want ourselves to be a little up from the ground so we used two two by four scrap pieces to elevate it we like this distance 
So we are going to attach it. We're going to attach both the self to the frame and the frame to the legs. And that will give us substantial strength on our uh, project. So again, if you want it here, you can have two selves. You don't need it for the stability of the piece, but you can. And I want to, for a moment, say the choice, even if I could use screws everywhere, remember that screws have very good sten stainless strength, sten ten tensile strength, which means that they pull well together. And this is what we need here in this corner. We need tensile strength, right? Mm -hmm. But here we want shear strength, and shear strength is the ability to hold loads this way, right? So the nails are a better choice to hold the load, and the screws are a better choice to hold the pieces together. Does that make sense? Yes. So we, we take advantage of the fasteners, and also I'm cheap. But <laughs> resourceful. Okay, resourceful. So that's the reason why we, we went this way. So we'll probably do something similar here, even though Alpida and, and uh, Miss Wizard does not like my... Your nail gun? My nail gun. That shoots stuff at us? Uh, yeah. Why? Okay. So we're going to use our uh, uh, staples, not staples, uh, yeah. rods to attach this to the frame. And then I'm going to, to shoot some uh, brad nails. You mean nails, nails? Nail nails, right. Not brad nails. To attach this to the frame. So stick around and we're going to show you this. Okay. So we don't need an amazing amount of... Uh, uh, connect, uh, connectors here. We just want it to loosely stay in place so if we try to slide something we will not move the, the cell, right? So we're going to just put a few brad nails and, and that will be it. I didn't do anything. Okay, and we're going to do the same on this side. And that will be enough. I think you need to oil this thing again. Probably. Okay, some blocking under the self, and that will serve uh, primarily the function of supporting the casters and putting everything together, adding strength to the whole uh, structure here, and allow us to put much heavier things on the self, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, maybe we need to use the other piece of wood so you can hold it, not this, it's too little. So when I hit the nails, uh, there is something to prevent it from moving back. So go, okay. go underneath. Okay. I think that's short. It is a little short. I mean, it will do. It's a little long here, so... <laughs> so if you want to mark it there. So we're going to put the... the brace between those two, I don't know if brace is the right term, but in, in essence it will go right here. It provides a little of uh, height support here, but mostly it will provide more lateral stability. Mm -hmm. And to correct those, we're going to correct those, connect those, we're going to use a little bit glue and pocket screws. Because they're becoming our favorite thing apparently. Well, we've used it more since we've moved to North Carolina than we ever did in uh, Kansas. No. Oh. Still has to come out there. What is the dimension of this thing? Looks like it's a one and a half inch board. So we have to change everything. Roughly. Here, I'll All right, let us correct dig to the correct dimensions, which is one and three eighths for this specific board. And now we're going to draw our uh, holes. All right. And again, when you do screw or uh, screw hold with a crack jig you need to be on the same side that's the important thing so we're going to do it in the other piece as well and we'll get go well i cannot speak today we're going to get right back with you
Is it solid? Yeah. Excellent. We'll probably need a little longer. This is to sort. That's pretty good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. All right. Do you want to do it then? It might be a little easier from your side. Okay. This one's a little bit shy, so probably need to get one. So we turn the piece upside down now, and we are going to attach the the casters. The, the casters. And this is why we put the extra piece of blocking. As you can see there, we didn't have enough space, even if we were to turn it this way. Mm -hmm. It would be right on the edge. Right, and it wouldn't give us strength. So this serves two purposes. It provides us better place to attach the caster and also provides more support if we have heavy things on the shelf. Mm -hmm. So we are going to make pilot holes. It is a good practice to keep our caster so we will not uh, damage our wood here. And these are inexpensive casters when we're talking about uh, cost. I think the four of us, what was a dollar each uh, at Harbor like, Freight? These were like two dollars each, I want to say, at Harbor Freight. No, the big ones were two dollars. Yeah, those these, smaller these, ones? Yeah, these were more. We bought dollar ones, but I'm pretty sure. Because they are rotating all of them? Yeah. Pretty sure these are two dollars. And again, we want them to rotate so we can easily move the, the, cart. the cart around, right? Yeah. So stationary. We're not going to be good for that. And here we are, all casters are installed on the little uh, tray, as you can see. And they're all 360 degree casters, which will allow this to be very uh, mobile and will help us move it around the shop. And also, as you can see, with the little shelf on the bottom, we have a very nice sturdy device now that hopefully will serve us for many years to so come. So here we are and this is our, our finished project and you can see it's extremely uh, mobile, very very agile and also even though we build it around this you really don't need this right you could easily close these ends mm -hmm. and have a wooden it won't be uh, removable you can even make it removable actually but mm -hmm. following the same uh, processes and do you want to help that you want to show them how easy it is to move? My favorite. That's what I was thinking. That's my favorite thing to do. Now, having decided about finish, I, in generally I don't like finishing things, but I was contemplating to paint the the metal part red to match my red uh, tray there. And if I do that, oh, and you've also got another. Right, I have red things. So it would all match. It will all match, right? That's important. Thing. And if I do this, I might paint the whole thing red. I don't know. No. 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 This you want to leave like this. Oh, you don't want me to paint this? No, okay. that has a very nice aged. Yeah, the character. Patina. Right. It's it's very interesting. Right. You know the way it looks now. It's got history this way. If you right. paint it, it has no history. Now painting your wood piece red is totally cool with me, but this you need to leave. All right, friends, and this is our project for today. So as you can see, we put some items on our card and they're going to follow us wherever our work is. And potentially, I might put my planer or my joiner on this, I don't know. Or, since we know how to make it now, because we made one, we might make one just for that, because the, the height might be different for the planer and the joiner, right? Well, potentially what you could do here is, have, since this is removable, we could make like a, a tray thing that pops over this to make it a flat top, and then both the planer or the joiner could go on top, and then you've got a sturdy cart that is movable, but has the flat surface. Well, one of my thoughts is to make so a... It would be like a lip. One of my thoughts is to make one of those with a, that flips. Yeah, so the planer and the, the joiner are in one thing that can be I used, think, you know, will save I a lot of space. I love the idea, I'm just not sure because of the weight of both of those machines, whether that's a good option for those two items. Yeah, many people have done it with even heavier items. So, okay. so anyway, but th the point is that this is a very useful item. Provide us with uh, storage and access if we're working on a project. We can example put everything we want here beforehand. Can you imagine that? And 
take it with us and so and not have to, to go back and forth to where things are 28 million trips i don't know what we would do and i really like this okay six to six i don't know what six to six is but anyway or no i think it's six to six because there's an aloe below anyway Thank you for staying with us for this episode of the Urban Homestanding Channel. And if you did enjoy this episode, the build, the idea, the fun, the interaction we had, we appreciate a thumbs up. If you didn't, the other button works as well. Please share, like, subscribe, let us know what you would like to see in the channel. And we're going to do our best to make content that is specifically to you. From the Garage Wizard, I'm sorry, Diana, nah, strike that. From Dr. Wizard, Mrs. Wizard, Elpida and Durban Home Standing Channel want to wish you a great weekend, have a great week, put your masks on, wash your hands and stay safe. See you soon friends.